This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. In this video, we're making a 3D daffodil cake design. It's broken down into steps so you can skip ahead, rewatch, and rewind as desired. So we're going to get started making the colors for our daffodil cake and I'm going to start with some blue. I've got my American style buttercream in my cup and that's what we're going to use for everything. And the blue is going to be the background for my cake so I'm going to use a little more. And I'm going to use four liquid gel colors, lemon yellow, violet, royal blue, and finally just a touch of coal black. So for my blue, I'm making the background for my cake. I just want to start with a drop. And then I'm going to add a couple of specks of my violet and my black just to give it a nice tone. So we want to create a nice hue. I want it to kind of remind me a little bit of spring where the sky has that touch of gray to it. We'll mix it around, see what we get. Might need to add just a little more gray to this, a little more black, kind of gray it up a tiny touch. Because it's pretty blue right now. So I'm just going to go a little more black, just a touch more violet. I think that's going to be beautiful. So somewhere, kind of looking to land somewhere between a French blue and a slate blue. And I think that's going to be gorgeous for the background of our cake. So the next color we're going to make is going to be a light shade of yellow. So I've got some lemon out on my lid and I'm just going to do a couple of little specks. Right in there. So I just want to make a nice soft shade of yellow. And I'm going to do my daffodils two-tone yellow, but there's lots of combinations you can do. So think yellow and white, uh, yellow with a darker shade of yellow, which is what we're going to do, and then yellow with orange. And you can make a lot of different varieties, different hues within those kind of color combos to create some really beautiful flowers. So that's a nice light kind of buttery, sunshiny shade of yellow. So my second shade of yellow, I'm just going to go darker. So a little less buttercream. We're using this for the trumpets. So we're just going to go more yellow in there just to make a more vibrant shade. We just want to make sure that it's nice and different from what we created before. So I can see my other color is really pastel and this one is a lot brighter. I might just want to go a little stronger just to make sure I get a good difference between the two and it reads well for my finished cake. And I think I'm just going to take the tiniest little touch of blue in there just for a little bit of that spring feel. And that should give me a nice kind of almost acidic electric shade of yellow. I think that's gorgeous. And finally, we're going to make some green. And I have quite a bit in here because we're going to do some stems and some nice long leaves on the side. So I want to start with a little bit of my yellow some of that blue and then finally I want to add some black as well because I really want the yellow and the flowers to stand out so I don't want the green kind of grabbing attention so I'm just going to dull it out a tiny tiny touch I just want to make a nice kind of like medium tone shade of this green so that I have something beautiful that will read against the blue we created. 
and also against the yellows we made without standing out too much. And I like where we're going in terms of the color. You can see it's a nice green, but it's just a touch muted. I just think it needs to be a little bit darker. So same ratio over again, and my blue and yellow, just to kind of bump up the value of that color. Make a more intense hue. And that's lovely. So for this project, we're gonna use three 12 inch disposable decorating bags. One we fitted directly with the tip and the other two with couplers. The first is with our light yellow color buttercream and you can see it's fitted directly with that 102 tip. So it's a smaller straight petal tip. The second for our bright yellow, we fitted with a coupler and we're gonna use this one with a 104 and with a number one tip as well. Our final bag is going to be for a green. It's also fitted with a coupler. And as you can see here, we're going to use numbers two, 103, which is also a straight petal tip, and a number six or seven tip. So just a large round tip. So let's talk about the techniques that we're going to use to create this 3D daffodil cake. The first one are going to be diamond shaped petals. And we have our bag with our 102 on it. And we're going to set it up so that the opening is on an angle and draw a diamond shape on our nail. And it's a little easier to do when I'm on my flower nail and I can spin, but essentially we're gonna create almost diamond shaped petals, right? So think of them as having those points and kind of imagine that line when you're drawing that outside edge. So it's slide out, up to a point, rotate, pull back, and then along that line. And that's gonna give you this nice characteristic shape for those flat petals that are gonna make up the bottom of our daffodil. Next, we've got upright petals. And this is gonna be for our trumpet. And we're gonna use the nature of these, oh, there we go, petal tips to our advantage. You can see the opening is fatter at the bottom. That's going to give us a nice little stable base there. And so what we're going to do is let that frosting come out, connect with the surface, and we're just going to wriggle a little line. And because it's fatter at the bottom, it's actually going to stand upright. And we'll do this on our nail as we're spinning, and it'll create a nice little circle for us and create that nice little fluted trumpet trumpet in the center of our flower. I'm going to switch over to my number one. And the next thing we're going to do is a little wriggly or zigzag style line. So for this, we want a nice small tip because we have a nice fine edge there. And we're just going to wiggle it back and forth. So just in that nice little zigzag pattern, nice and tight, and because the line is tiny, it'll sit right on top of that ridge and give us that little fluted ruffled edge on the top of our daffodil trumpet. So next we're gonna do some spikes and these are just gonna start out like dots. We're gonna let that frosting connect, build up, and then we're gonna pull up while we're still squeezing. So just like you would with a leaf tip. And by comboing them together, we can create stamens in the middle of our flower. And that's also going to help create some stability for us and give that trumpet that we're gonna create some support. And next, we're gonna do stems. You can use number six, number seven, basically any large opening round tip. And we're gonna do lines, but because we're on the side of our cake, we can't do our normal drop down style of line. We have to be right there against the surface. So you wanna let that frosting connect and then just pull away a tiny bit and just ever so gently kind of slide, graze, just gently against the surface or right above it if you've got some control. And that's gonna create a nice smooth line for you rather than if you probably try to drag along 
you'll notice they become flatter and less clean, right? So it's not quite as straight, it's a little wriggly, it's a little smashed. So trying to just go right above the surface, just hovering there, kind of barely grazing with the tip, that'll keep you in the nice direction where that frosting flows out evenly and wonderfully, but you're not too far away from the cake that it's not connecting. And that's a great way to do lines on the side of the cake rather than the drop down, which we usually reserve for the top. So for our leaves for this one, daffodils have kind of wide, flat leaves that are really nice and long. So we're actually going to draw them on a tray and chill them, just like we're going to do our flowers on our nail and chill them. So I'm going to go with the back of the bag pointing up. The fat end is towards the middle, and when I get to where I want to make my top, I'm going to trail off to the side, so it's kind of like drawing a curve. I'm then going to rotate, so you can rotate your tray or whatever you're working on, and pull back towards myself. So keep that point, pull back, make sure your lines meet and kind of overlap in the center, and you can create these nice, long, flat leaves for yourself that you can then chill, and then we can lift up and place directly on the side of our cake. So let's talk a little bit about building our blossom. We're going to work on our flower nail. We want to first pipe five or six of those flat diamond shaped petals right there on the surface. And then we're going to pipe a nice little mound with our number two tip. So just a little bit of a dot there and pipe our stamens on top. This is going to help give our trumpet just a little support and make those stamens so that they're the right height without flopping over. We're then going to switch over to our bag of our brighter yellow buttercream that has that 104 tip on it. And we're gonna pipe that trumpet all the way around that inside mound with those stamens. Switch over to our one tip and we'll do our little wriggle on the top. Then we can transfer those flowers over to a tray, pop them in the fridge to chill so they're nice and firm and ready to put on our cakes. So we're gonna get a layer of that blue on our cake. We have a four inch round cake that we filled and coated with white buttercream so it's ready to start decorating and it's nice and firm. Just a big glob on top, smooth it out in your, with your spatula, just a nice thin layer just to get the color on the outside and make it nice and even. Once you go around on top, I'll do the sides with my spatula. The idea here is just to get a nice little coating of our blue on our cake and get it nice and even. And this might take you one pass. If you're new to decorating, it might take you two or even more. I like putting the color on the outside, even when it's light colors. It means people can avoid eating the food coloring if they want to. keeps everyone from ending up with blue tongues and blue teeth, especially with darker colors that stain. It's also nice practice for your control. I'm just gonna get that last little area. With this last bit of blue. It also means you get to use a lot less food coloring because you don't need to color all your buttercream. So especially when you're doing dark colors, that can really save you a lot on the amount of food coloring you use. So I'm just gonna give it a quick pass to straighten up those sides, even out that coating, make everything look beautiful. And once I do that, I'm just gonna give it a pass across the top just to get all that excess off. And then we'll stick it in the refrigerator 15, 20 minutes, everything's already kind of cold. It's just that nice little light layer that's a little warm and then we'll clean it up and see if it needs any patching anywhere. If there's any thin or uneven spots, we can fix those up really quickly before we apply our flowers. 
So I'm going to prepare some leaves on a tray. You can see I've got a nice clean tray, clean piece of parchment. I drew two five inch lines with Sharpie line across the top because that's the height of my cake. So I don't really want to exceed five inches with any of these. I want to make some of them longer and some of them shorter. And I'm just going to do exactly what we practiced before where I draw up and to a point you can kind of rotate your tray, whatever you're working on, and then we're going to draw back down. And the real key here is just to make sure that those lines meet in the center or overlap. So you get that nice little shape for those lines, and we'll be able to peel these off and st stick them directly to the side of the cake. If we we're piping this on the cake, it would be really hard to pull that down line because you're gonna get into some awkward angles where you run into your uh, turntable. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make a couple of these for each of my little clusters of daffodils. I'm probably gonna have three. So I want two to three leaves for each one and I'm gonna make them varied heights. And you can even give them a little bit of a curve at the top if you want to and make them go other directions. So you can have a lot of fun and play with this and no two leaves need to be the same. So make some short and some long and feel free to give them some style and movement. So you can see, I took just a couple of minutes. I piped a whole bunch of these leaves, different heights, uh, different orientations. They bend different ways, and I've given myself some extras. That way, when I'm going to actually place them on my cake, I have lots of options for choice in terms of size and style to really work into my arrangement. We're gonna pop these in the refrigerator. Good 20, 30 minutes. They should be nice and firm and easy to handle and place on our cake. So let's get started piping some daffodils. And we're gonna start with the fat end of the tip towards the center, and we're gonna draw our first diamond-shaped petal. And the bag is kind of in a lay flat position, right? The opening is flat against the surface, with just the end, very end of the tip off. And the back of the bag is kind of facing towards that 130 clock position. That means we can draw a nice diamond shaped petal, you can see rotate, and then it's easy to pull right back. And what we're going to do is pipe three of these and then go back and pipe three more. They almost lay just a little bit on top. So you want to think about a peace sign and leave a little bit of a gap in between each of those petals. So out to the back, rotate, spin, and pull back towards the center. And these are a little more petite than the ones that we normally do. So if you want a more in-depth tutorial on doing daffodils and you want to see more detail, you can always watch the tutorial that we already have uh, in our flower series. And you'll notice that we're using slightly bigger tips than that one. So you can create multiple sizes of daffodils with the same technique. So then we're just going to go back and pipe right in between those and do another two or three petals. But for this cake, I wanted to do more petite flowers. So you can always stop at five or you can always put that sixth one on there. So you can see you get this nice little diamond shaped petals on there. They just have a little bit of a flare up off the surface. So now we're gonna start working on creating our center. I'm just gonna go right into the middle of those petals, pipe myself a nice little dot of that green, just something for everything to stand up on. And then I'm gonna pull some of those great little spikes. Nice, frilly, hairy, let them do their thing. One in the center and probably five or six around just to build up a nice center to support that trumpet. So now we've got our bag with our 104 and our bright yellow. We're gonna orient it so that opening is going straight up and down. My bag is at a 45 degree angle and the back is pointing towards my right shoulder. And I'm just gonna start right next to that little center I did, right next to that dot, and just gently wiggle up and down as I rotate my flower nail. And just go around and just kind of 
and close that first little um, start of that line. So sometimes it kind of wants to flick out to the side on you. If you just gently take your tip and kind of work around it, you can kind of pull it back towards the center. So you can see that already makes a nice little enclosure and a cute little daffodil, but we're gonna put that little wiggle line on top just to add that little extra bit of frilly detail. So just to finish off our little daffodils, we're gonna start right on this top edge and just do that little wiggly line and let it kind of fall down right on that edge, just gentle motion. I'm kind of keeping my bag stationary and just slowly turning my nail as I go. And it'll add just a little bit of ruffle detail to the top and give those little daffodils a sweet little look. So we're getting ready to start putting the putting the decorations on our cake and we want to just mark it quickly so we know where to draw our lines and we have a rough idea of where we want to put our flowers. And I want to do some stems that are long and go all the way to the top, some that are maybe a little shorter. I might put a few little kind of bud-like um, blossoms on there and I just want to give it just a little room between them if I'm going to put two of them close together on top to make sure that the blossoms aren't knocking into each other. So just a few stems here and there, one grouping there, there, and there, and I just want to make them roughly equidistance apart. And so some of them I might only put one blossom up there at the top, and some of them I might put two. I just want a nice rough idea of where I'm going with everything before I start. So I have a guide for my green and I know exactly where I'm going to put it. And then I want to do just like we did when we practiced on our tray. I'm going to take my green and just lightly glide along the surface. To create those stems. And I got just a few gaps in mine. I'm not going to worry about that because I'm actually going to put some really big leaves on them. We made those on the tray and I can just put a leaf over that and no problem. It's going to hide that little blemish. But if you do that, generally it means you're going maybe a little too fast or you might just have a couple of air bubbles and you can slow it down. I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of my stems on so I have a nice little spot for all my details to go and I know exactly where I'm going to place them. So just keep working until you have all your stems in place. And I think that first one was just moving a little too fast. Just slow it down if you see that happening and that should correct the problem. If it doesn't, it probably means it's air bubbles, which sometimes unfortunately happen, especially with buttercream. So I'll finish up this grouping and then we'll go around and do the rest off camera. And you can see we just took a couple of minutes, went around, traced over those lines and got all of our stems in place. So now that we've got our stems on, we're gonna start working on placing our little flowers. And we want some of them kind of facing straight up and some of them tilted a little bit towards us. So I'm just gonna put a little buttercream down pick a nice little blossom to start with and you want to make sure that they're nice and firm so that they're really easy to handle and it's just going to be easy to place these sweet little blossoms anywhere we want to and if you need to if you need a little support in the back don't be afraid to put in even some yellow behind if you want to tilt a blossom forward just so that that support buttercream kind of disappears a little bit. And I like to put them kind of at funny little angles. Daffodils tend to kind of flop over, kind of flutter in the wind. So it's nice just to have them kind of going at funny little angles from each other. And it just makes for a cute little arrangement. So I'm just gonna keep working. And I made myself six blossoms. It'll probably only take four or five to get all the way around and put some on each of my groupings. To 
don't be afraid to put on more either if you want to. I always like having extra because that means I have some to play with and I can play with which ones I want and what sizes they are, but that looks adorable. Now I have some shorter stems over here. You could place some blossoms on facing directly out, but I made myself some little buds. And if you'd like to do this, it's very easy. You can pipe directly on your cake, but I'm gonna show you on my nail. So all I'm gonna do is pipe one of those diamond shaped petals, give myself a little squeeze just for a little buildup in the middle, and then pipe another one on top and just give yourself a little line down the side. And I did, did these ahead of time, popped them on my tray to chill just because I thought it would be nice to have a few buds on there. So mine are all ready to go, but you can literally pipe them directly on the side of your cake. So we've got some open little spots there and I'm gonna put some of the little buds that I made on. So I'm just gonna give myself a dot of green. So it's got something to adhere to. And then I've got some that I piped in advance the other day. And just gently work those onto my cake. And if you wanna make the connection between the stem and the bud look more natural, you can just pipe some cute little teardrop shapes at the base, so fat and then pulling up. And it'll give it that look like it's still partially covered in green and opening up. So just one on each side. So a nice little addition there. I'm going to go around and put some on these other little empty stems as well. My thing that I'm going to do to finish up my cake is pull some of the leaves off of my tray. So I'm just going to start with one. And you can see I've got these nice cold hard leaves I can kind of play around with. Anywhere I want to stick them on, just give them a little bit of buttercream on the back and you should be able to place them directly on your cake. And I'm gonna play with the height and the size and the angle that they tilt towards just to get a nice pleasing arrangement. And anywhere I say don't like the way a stem looks, like I got a few little kind of bubbles and pops right there, that's a great place to just place a leaf directly on top. It makes it really easy to cover up any hiccups in your line and it really adds that nice little finishing touch to these little kind of groupings of daffodils that I have going on. And I like to have lots of extra leaves to play with. And if you give them plenty of time to chill up, I let mine actually chill up overnight. They're nice and firm, and since we're using that American buttercream, it'll crust a little bit, and it makes them really easy to handle. You end up with these nice, dynamic little um, groupings of daffodils. So we're going to work all the way around and show you the finished cake. And here you can see we have our finished daffodil cake. We've got three cute little groupings. Each one is a little bit unique and individual and they tilt forward just a little bit to kind of present themselves. So they've got nice natural kind of flopping over feel that daffodils give you. It's a great little design for spring and we hope you enjoyed it. If you want to learn more about piping daffodil blossoms, you can always check out one of our flower series videos. We've got a great one on making daffodils where you'll notice that the tip size we use is a little bit larger. So you can use the same method we used here to make a variety of different sized daffodils for different creations. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.